Good morning and welcome to worship with the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. Wherever you find yourself on this morning, we hope that you are well and we are so glad that you have joined us. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds to worship God and join our voices in our responsive call to worship. To you, O Lord, we lift our souls. To you, we offer our lives. For you, For you are, are good and, and forgiving and, and abounding in steadfast love. In heaven and on earth, there is none like you. Your works are beyond compare. For, For you are great and, and do wonderful, wonderful things. things. You, you alone are our God. Yeah. 
The Lord gives us the Great Commission, but we like to commission ourselves in ways that separate us from the Lord and from each other. So as we come to this time of worship, let us come and confess these separations, these sins that are in our lives. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession that will be followed by a time for silent prayers. Let us pray. Divine Teacher, you tell us to trust in your care for us and not to fear. But we cower before threats to our comfort and security and do not step forward boldly in faith. You tell us to proclaim your truth from the housetops, but we stay silent for fear of offending. You tell us to take up the cross and follow, but we live as though death still holds dominion and refuse to take risks for the sake of the gospel. We fail to challenge powers that diminish and principalities that destroy. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to live with you and for you. Make us worthy to bear the name of Christ. Amen. Please join with me in our responsive assurance of pardon. All of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We know, we know that, that our old self was crucified with him so that we might no longer be enslaved to sin. Death no longer has dominion. We are alive to God in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. First of all, I want to say Happy Father's Day to all of the dads that are worshiping with us this Sunday. Today we're going to talk about the word disciple. Now disciple is not a word that you hear outside of church very much, but the disciples were the first followers of Jesus, and they did exactly that. They followed along with Jesus and they listened to all of the words that he said. And we now today as disciples or followers of Christ, we're also known as Christians. And as Christians to follow Jesus is to live the way that God wants us to live. And living that way means that we treat everyone that we meet with kindness and respect and love, no matter where they come from, what they look like, what kind of clothes they may wear, we treat everyone the same, and we treat them just the way that we want to be treated out in the world. And to live like that is to live the way that Jesus taught us. And it's not always easy to be a follower of Christ. It's not always easy to follow in Jesus' footsteps, because not everybody does, and not everybody you meet will. And so when you encounter somebody that doesn't, I know that you guys are all super great kids and coming to church and learning how to follow Christ, that you will live his way and people can learn from you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for loving us. Help us to be your followers, to show kindness, love, and respect to everybody that we meet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. O oh Lord, send now your spirit into our midst to entice us and overpower us with the strength of your word. 
We beg for the strength to hear your call and live according to your will. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 through 13. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Our second reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more valuable value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges before me others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The world is abuzz right now with talk of safety. Is it safe or unsafe to do this or that? Where do outdoor dining, movie theaters, church, swimming pools, a backyard barbecue with friends rank on the scale of risk? On Facebook, you'll find a simplistic but ominously colored infographic to help you make your complex decisions. We're tying ourselves in knots, trying to figure out how to best stay safe and enjoy more of the things that we love. In our passage this morning, Jesus doesn't have anything specific to say about how and whether we physically gather in the midst of a global pandemic. But he does have a lot to say about safety 
in the life of discipleship. Namely, don't count on it. Disciples are like the teacher, Jesus says. So when the teacher is called Beelzebul, the prince of the devils, as Jesus himself is called by the Pharisees just a little later on in Matthew, his disciples can expect to be called worse. They can expect to be pressured to stay silent and to deny Christ. By preaching Jesus' gospel of radical love, grace for the outcast, and forgiveness for the most unsavory, disciples can expect to stir up trouble and to come into conflict with others, including those they love most. Jesus asks a level of allegiance that will force a crisis of loyalty in every other area of their lives and will demand excruciating decisions about the next highest calling upon them, their families. And of course, this man who will be marked for execution tells his disciples they can expect to be threatened with death. The right to kill with impunity being a long-held weapon of the politically powerful. He even asks them to willingly take up the cross, that chief intimidation tool of the Roman Empire, and thereby cast their lot with those who would not submit to Rome's authority and were punished for it. Clearly, discipleship carries a steep cost, and kingdom work is more controversial and subversive than we might like to believe. Now, anyone in their right mind would be more than a little afraid of what Jesus is saying here. We're wired to avoid pain, to steer away from risk, to resist such vulnerability. This fear is normal and natural, and even sometimes beneficial. It's our survival instinct. It can keep us from acting too hastily or harshly. It can signal when we need to learn and listen more deeply before speaking and acting. It can show us where to hold compassion. It can lead us to examine our motivations. And it reminds us most of all of our absolute dependence upon God. But ultimately, fear causes the failure of true discipleship because it keeps us stagnant and silent. It tells us to keep our heads down and to hold on to our lives instead of aligning ourselves totally and completely with God, God's kingdom, and God's mission. Uncomfortable as it may be, though, Jesus is quite clear in this passage that if we are to walk his path and to proclaim and build the kingdom he brought among us, our guiding principle as a congregation, as a people, cannot be to play it safe. We must stop tying ourselves in knots, trying to figure out how to be the body of Christ safely, namely without ever offending anyone, without ever losing any members, especially big donors, without pushing people outside of their comfort zones, without being too political or too controversial, and without changing anything about the way it's always been, 
the way that makes us nice and comfortable. We cannot hold on to our life with its privileges and comforts and traditions and patterns when all that is built within and upon a broken, unjust system. To do so would be to turn our backs on the marginalized, hurting, oppressed people of our day, our black, brown, gay, lesbian, transgender, immigrant, and imprisoned brothers and sisters, the very type of people Jesus touched in his own earthly ministry. And to do so would absolutely cause us to lose the full, everlasting kingdom life that God wants to belong to everyone. For as Jesus tells us, we must lose our life in order to find it. Jesus knows we are scared. He knows this all goes against our grain. So three times in six verses, he tells us not to fear. He reminds us that God's power far overshadows that of any earthly rulers. He reassures us that God cares for us more intimately than we can ever imagine. God has numbered the hairs on our heads and cherishes us even more than the beloved sparrows. By repeating the refrain to have no fear. Jesus encourages us to have courage, to resist intimidation, and to persist in our kingdom work even when the consequences are hard because God is with us. As everything else tilts and cracks around us and we feel the pain of division and discord when they come, and the challenge of change being asked of us, God holds us firm. There are times as disciples that we sit and listen and learn, and it is vital that we do. And there are times God calls us to preach a message that is uncomfortable and that many people won't like. And this moment in which we stand is one of those times. From the pages of Matthew, Jesus is telling us, what I say to you in the dark tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Now is our time to step into the light and to preach from the housetops. Now is the time to proclaim in every way we possibly can Christ's gospel message of love for the outcast and justice for the oppressed, and freedom for the prisoner. Now is the time to lean into our fear of the consequences, to find our courage within God's steadfast love, and to speak boldly as a congregation, not just as individuals. Now is the time to publicly say that black lives matter. And they have been injured, bowed down, oppressed, imprisoned, and killed by our systems and our structures for far too long. They have borne the burden of our collective sin for far too long. Now is the time to publicly say that LGBTQ people are cherished by the God whose image they bear. And they have been silenced, spit upon, shamed, excluded, and killed by our society for far too long. 
Now is the time to publicly say that migrants, immigrants, and refugees are children of God. And they have been demonized, dehumanized, exploited, and killed by our society for far too long. The Romans used the cross to stamp out resistance and the rising of the people. Yet through Jesus Christ, the cross became the conduit of the most significant resistance and rising the world has ever known. The Romans' primary mechanism of death became a sign of death's destruction through God's power. Jesus is calling us now to take up the cross, to take up the resistance and the rising, and to let the chips fall where they may. When our leaders and institutions use law and order to suppress the flourishing of human life instead of to support it, the time has come for change and reform. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we have been shown a different way, a kingdom way. It's never been a big hit among the powerful and the privileged. We know that. We feel that. But it is who we are as Christians, and it's time for us to step up, to preach it, to demand it, to build it, and to live it in every possible way that we can. God goes with us on the journey. We do not need to be afraid. Amen.
For over 10 years, the Stephen Ministry here at the Presbyterian Church in Morristown has been supporting members of our congregation through life's challenges. Things like chronic or terminal illness, caregiving, grief, job loss, divorce, infertility, or the losses and transitions associated with aging. During this time of COVID-19 and social distancing, our Stephen ministers continue to serve faithfully and stand ready to support you or someone you care about if something in your life is getting to be more than you can bear alone. Please reach out to me or to any of our Stephen leaders if you'd like to learn more or make a referral. Everything you share is strictly confidential. Our ministry is continuously expanding, and this January, one of our longest serving Stephen ministers, Jim Wood, attended the week-long training to become a Stephen leader. In his new role, Jim will join our leader team to help guide our program toward an even stronger future. Today, we have the joy of commissioning Jim as a Stephen leader. Jim, you have been asked to serve as a Stephen leader here at the Presbyterian Church in Morristown and have completed your week-long training in the Stephen series. You are a gift of God to us to lead us in this ministry of equipping and caring. As Christians who are part of the priesthood of all believers, we are all called to offer ourselves to our Lord in thanksgiving for what God has done and continues to do for us in Jesus Christ. It is also our privilege to recognize and support those who are equipped for specific ministries in this congregation, as we do today, as we affirm our newest Stephen leader and our Stephen minister. Jim, will you assume this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? I will. Will you nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others to support, encourage, build up, and heal people in all their needs? I will. Will you, members of our church, open your hearts to Jim's ministry and that of all our Stephen leaders and pray for him as a servant of Jesus Christ? If so, please answer, we do. We do. We do. And now let us pray. Gracious God, you have called Jim to lead us into new paths of caring ministry. You have gifted and empowered him for this task. Grant him joy in his service and a spirit of bold trust in you that his ministry may stir us all to greater caring and more fruitful service. Help us all to be both willing servants and thankful recipients of this ministry so that your name may be glorified, your people live in peace, and your good and gracious will be done through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Jim, may our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with the Holy Spirit, and guide, bless, and keep you, so that you may be faithful in the ministry to which you have been called, gifted, trained, and sent. Congratulations. Let us pray. Ever-present God, we give thanks for your steadfast love and faithfulness that holds us minute by minute day by day, in any location we may find ourselves. We give thanks for a love that is saturated with your grace. We give thanks for faith that carries us day by day and for eternity. On this day, we pray that we will be the embodiment of a love that is steadfast and faithful and not fearful and that will usher in your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We desperately seek to return what we know as normalcy. May we be steadfast in our efforts to not allow a return 
to a normal where many remain outside the reality of justice for all and the opportunities we have known. May we be resolute in our faith in all, that together we can create a kingdom where all know grace, mercy, and security. May we be so filled with the presence of your Son that our default responses of denial and justification will fade from our lives, words, and actions. On this day, we pray for those who in a particular way need to know your steadfast love and care. We lift up Mary and James, Patricia, new parents, Layla and David, and their twins, Evelyn and Caden. We also pray for Gonzalo. And we lift up Jim, who was commissioned today as a Stephen ministry leader. We pray that you will give him the wisdom he will need to fulfill his ministry. Today, we also think of fathers and father figures in our lives. We even know that the last few months, fathers have had some new opportunities, challenges, and we pray that they will continue to seek you and seek to show the steadfast love that we abide in within our lives. And at this time, we also pray for others that we have on our hearts and minds on this day. We now join together, wherever we may be, in the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now, wherever you may be, proclaim God's gospel truth, hope, love, and justice from the rooftops. Proclaim it with all the words your heart can muster. Proclaim it with your actions and with your very being. And know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and the power of the Holy Spirit go with each and every one of us this day and always. Amen.